first of all we're going to look at motor orientation because that's the key to getting your polarities right now. What you want to do is you want to set your cage up so that the barrel end is facing away from you and then you take your left hand motor and you put your left hand motor in with the red polarity dot facing forwards and then your right hand motor will go the opposite direction like that. That puts the negative feed here so when you wire it up that will be your negative blaster wire so that comes from the direct to the battery the negative usually um, and then this is your feed from your rev trigger so that's the positive so that's negative forwards positive backwards in this orientation so that is left hand motor red dot positive forwards right hand motor red dot positive backwards now the best place for this to be photographed that I've seen is uh, on Turok Makto's excellent blog I'll put a link to that in the description box there and that's where I got all of my polarities from this applies to all motors not just FK180s if you want them to rotate so that you actually fire darts forwards instead of back into your mag red positive dot that way red positive dot that way so there's your polarities and then we've got to fit the motor now and uh, in order to get these in tight they should be a tight interference fit. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of uh, lubrication onto the motor case. This is just a little bit of uh, washing up liquid, just because it's easier. I had it to hand. And just put a little bit of that around the motor end bell. And then remembering my orientation, so right motor, positive dot backwards. And then I want to push it right up into the shell, which can require quite a lot of force. So. Do be careful that you don't break off this little piece here. Okay, so I'm going to fit motor and I want to go, I'll do the left hand one first. So left hand motor, remember red dot forwards and into the cage. And then you will have to apply some considerable force to get these to go in. And you're aiming to get this end of the motor right the way up into the housing. This can be quite tricky without the application of a tool. And if you do have to use a tool, then please don't put the tool in the middle or anywhere near the tags and only use it a tiny bit you'll only need to just get a little bit and the best sort of thing to use is kind of a big flat nose water pump pliers are really good for this because they've got wider jaws but you don't want to use anything pointy or anything sharp on there or you'll wreck the motor and uh, then you've got to keep pushing that motor up until you get right in you can also push down and wiggle right to left like that and that makes a big difference to getting it in you've got to go right the way here and you can see that's not flush yet see here you've got to get the bearing housing right flush with the plastic at the end there so if you have to remove a motor for any reason say you want to go back and just tweak that cage a bit more wiggle right to left like that and then gently pull backwards and you'll see that will come out even though I couldn't push that in with my hands so if it doesn't fit that means you've got to shave a bit more off your cage okay so there we can see the motors installed in the cage and you can see that in this area they're, com they're almost completely flush. You must get the bearing snout right up there because that gives you the maximum shaft length protruding to attach your flywheel to and it also means that your motors will be nice and straight and you want them straight in the can because otherwise your flywheel will be off. Now here's where we can gain some really good little tricks and tweaks that a lot of people never think about. So you're ready to actually test and you can put your flywheels on. So you can just squeeze your flywheels on now a quick word about flywheels, rapid strike flywheels are notorious for being wonky as anything so if you're unlucky and you've got a wonky set then you're going to have to go and buy yourself a strife or a rapid red and pirate the flywheels from that one thing you can do if you're unscrupulous obviously is swap them and then return it but I didn't say that um, you can just buy a second hand one or buy one when they're on offer and then sell it on on eBay and you finish with the flywheels and uh, when you've got the flywheels on, you just want to spin them in your finger just to make sure that they're not touching the end bell because sometimes they have a little bit of flash on the inside or gunk. These are a well used set so they've got a bit of foam build up too which is always good. Now when you've attached your flywheels, one of the things that nobody does, or I've not seen anybody do, is to test the, test the uh, true running of the flywheel and to do that, this is where your little test pack comes in, doesn't matter which way around you're going to rotate the uh, motor this time. This is obviously better if you do it with some uh, crocodile clips but I haven't been bothered to put my crocodile clips on, I've got them sat there, I just haven't attached them yet. So if you've got a little pair of crocodile clips it's worth attaching a pair of croc clips to the end because it makes life easier. Now I'm just going to go and use the red positive marker on here, doesn't matter which way it turns for testing. So 
keep your fingers away from the flywheel, but three volts will turn these real nice. And what you're looking for, there you go, look, if you watch that flywheel, you can see that's not spinning very true. It's not a very good flywheel, unfortunately, that one. It's not uh, terribly true. Now, the more true your flywheel is, the better your performance is. So we'll try the other one in the set and see what that's like. If these are no good, then I just have to take them off and go again. So, second one. Yeah, that one's not very true either. So you can see, you can hear that that also buzzes and doesn't run terribly well. So I'd say that that set's really not not quite good enough for 180s and certainly not for high high rev use. So I'm going to have to start again with that set flywheel. So when you want to take your flywheels off, if you're removing flywheels, don't use anything under here, don't pry them. So just grab hold of the centre and pull. There you go, flywheel off. Same again for the other side. It should be quite tight to be a bit careful when you're doing this. No, they will come off. It just takes a bit of force. There you go. So pull those off. And uh, you don't want to put too much strain on the uh, shaft, you see. So you don't want to bend the shaft or pull it out of its uh, pull it out of the end bearing and damage it. But they should come off. So those flywheels are actually no good for this particular application. But that is how you get your polarity right. And then all you've got to do then is solder up. Here's one that I finished. This is actually out my ultimate rapid pistol. And you can see here a negative connection at the front and a positive connection at the back. I put a Deans on this particular build, and in fact all my builds now have this so that you can just unplug the motor block for servicing and it makes life much easier. In the Rapid Strike that Deans hides in the hollowed out uh, foregrip just in front of the magazine, I hollow that area out. You can see that in my Ultimate Rapid Pistol internals. Um, and uh, Turok also in TAC mods, Turok puts it underneath, he puts his Deans connector underneath the wiring cover in the magwell. It's another good place that you can put them. And then in Strifes you've got two places, if you're running 180s you can actually hook them underneath inside the motor cover but it's difficult and um, you can also put them in the um, dead space just up in the above the battery tray that works quite well it gives you a long lead but it works and also in the area around the shark's teeth in the front there's just enough room to squeeze them in there with a bit of tweaking